Okay, we're in the car. We've got the ALDL adapter connected between the PC USB and the ALDL connector in the Fiero. We got our laptop here. We're going to launch the uh, GUI. It's going to come up. It's going to get a yellow light to let me know we're talking to the uh, adapter. And when we get the green light, we've established communications. Okay, we're going to make sure that we're in normal mode. And we're going to start monitoring. Actually, and there we go. We, we've got, we're going to start the car. Well, before I start the car, these are the five bytes of data that come out of the ECM when we're in normal mode. It's spitting out data for a mileage uh, 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 fuel economy MPG indicator uh, that they never offered for the Fiero. They were in the process of doing it before they discontinued the car. So this data, it was preliminary. I don't even know how to decode it other than I know that one of them is an incrementing counter. Maybe over time I'll, be, I'll figure out what it's doing. So I just put TBD in there. This is no use to normally with the Fiero because, again, there was no M MPG indicator. But when we start the car... This counter will start updating. And as you can see, it's starting to count up. It's an interval counter uh, to get an accurate time, how much time between updates. And every now and then, you'll get a second frame of data between syncs. Again, that's just the way that mode works. So I just wanted to show you normal mode. Now we're going to stop, and we're going to go to the mode you're going to use most often, ALDL mode. This is the assembly line diagnostic link. And when you monitor that, now you're going to get a full frame of data. And you can see this is showing us different things. So you can monitor this in real time. You can watch the graphs. You can zoom this. We can do a zoom fit. Zoom out. And when you stop, you can play with the graph later. It holds the data until you clear it. Okay, so you can monitor all you want. And then when you're done, you can stop. Then if you, you want to take it for a drive or something or you want to record it, what you can you can record the data and play it back later you hit record and we're going to call it test which i already have a file in there it's going to warn me that i have a file the way i want to write it yes i'm going to overwrite it now our frames are updating and i can hit a mark and i put a mark in the recording so later when i play back the recording i can mark events like oh the car backfired hit mark or I just started the car, hit mark, whatever I want to mark, and I can put as many marks in the file as I want. It helps you find this place in the graph or during playback. It's a nice little feature that I added. So, and then you can watch it. Now after a few minutes, eventually you're gonna see a closed loop flag will pop up over here in mode word one, the air fuel mixture. That's when the car is warmed up enough that it can start using the O2 sensor to figure out what you know how to how to uh, get the fuel economy to the maximum and, and for um for emissions so it takes about a minute or two before that gets warm enough i'm not going to wait for the closed loop to enter we, we can show that later in another video but i just wanted to show you how the recording works so I'll, I'll hit another mark to say that i was getting ready to stop the recording not that it matters and we'll shut off the engine and we'll we'll uh what else can I, okay, let's play back that recording. Why not, let's play it back. So now you're inside the house, you wanna look at your data. And you can say it's playing back the data. There was the mark that I said when I put a mark on the recording. You can see we're sitting there. And you can actually increase the playback speed a little bit. So you don't have to sit there and wait forever. Let's go play back. Oh, test. I'm sorry, I had the wrong file. Test. There we go. Mark. There we go. Now we should see a mark in a minute here. And I'm going to go to fast playback. There's a mark. So I marked the file. You can mark anytime something happens, you can mark it so you can find that event quicker. And we're updating faster and faster here. And we'll play through the whole recording. So when you're playing back, looking at the frame data frame by frame, you don't have to wait the the 1.4 seconds you can you can you can, you can do as fast update as possible All right. and now it's done and you can look at the graph now and you can zoom fit and you can see everything that was going on inside the car of course you could shut off all data and let's just say let's look at the uh, velocity the rpm and the throttle position indicator 
let's do another zoom fit. So look at there, velocity was zero. I wasn't doing anything on the TPS. And then I started throttling up and down. The RPMs went up and down. So just to give you an idea, you can look at your data and you can record for an hour or two if you want. Um, now there's another way you can play back and that's playback and goes right to graph. Test. Boom, goes right to the graph. And it shows the integration O2 and BLM, which are the three main ones. But you can, you can turn on your, uh, let's look at map velocity RPM. You can turn these on a la carte as you wish. Zoom. And if you want to identify one, it's kind of hard here with the touchpad, but you, you, you right click on something. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right click. It's really hard with a touchpad. <laughs> TPS is what we wanted. So to identify, again, when you have a mouse, this is really easy. I'll show you inside, but. There you go. So, so you can identify traces when you, again, on a mouse, these touch pads are terrible for that, touch screens. You can identify traces. So in the mix, you can say, what is just trace, you know? And if you look carefully, you see the little, uh, you can move the cursor. And then we're going to move the cursor back. There was the place in the mark where the, the file was marked. So you get marks to show you about where the marking was done. Zoom normal. Okay, so you can find the marks that you had. They're marked across the top there. And so you can get, you can look at your air fuel mixture readings. You can look at your pseudo NOx because there's no NOx sensor, so those those are estimated. You can look at flags that show up. I'll show you that in a minute. You can look at your air, your malfunction flags, and of course your graph. So let's go back into monitor mode, and let's start the car. And let's look at our status flags. And like I said, you can right click on any one of these to get more information on what the flags are. So you can watch the flags in real time. And you can watch your malfunction flags, which we're not getting any malfunctions. And you can watch your air fuel blocks update. And of course, you can always uh, watch your knock counter. And you can look at graphing as you go. And that's the tool. And the help file tells you all about the GUI, all sorts of good information in there, even an acronym list. Of course, you got the help, I mean, the about that tells you the version information. And then these are just displays that mimic the, uh, the, you know, this is not the real gauge that you have in the car. This is the actual CTS temperature gauge. There's actually two temperature gauges, one that drives the gauge in your car and one that goes to the ECM. I'm showing the one that the ECM is doing as if it was the one in the car because that's redundant. And fuel is just estimated because there's no sensor for that. I just estimate the fuel being used. You know, voltage is right, but te oil temperature, there's no sending unit to the, uh, the sending unit only goes to the gauges. So the oil temperature is, is, is estimated when the engine's running. I just show it being at normal. But you have these other ones, which is your manifold absolute pressure uh, right here. And I show it in vacuum, but on the screen you get them both. This is your uh, air intake temperature and your your manifold uh, absolute pressure, and then there's your timing there. That's what the other one is. This also estimates what gear you're in. It uses the uh, speedometer and tachometer to determine what gear you're in. Again, there was no indicator for it, so I had to do that. And I have a mileage, and you know, um, fuel efficiency indicator that I'm, I'm working on. And of course, if it says that you know you're sitting here at idle and you're not in gear, you must have your brake and emergency you know, brake and your clutch in. But you can watch the uh, throttle. Remember, it updates every 1.4 seconds. It's not a very high-speed link, so that's the fastest as the ALDL will go. But you can you can watch things update. Okay, so we'll stop that. We can go into diagnostic mode. You should see the light blinking down here. So we can count the flashes. Twelve. And I don't have no error codes. And then you can look up the error codes. 
And again, you can right click on any one of these. Or a touchpad, and you can get information on them. I like that popped up. And then you can go back to normal mode and it will shut it off. And then you can exit the GUI, simply hit exit, and that's it.